In my last video, I talked about saving titles into the effects folder to allow them to interact with footage and be customizable. In this series of videos, I'm going to actually go through the titles themselves, how I built them, and then we'll show you how to save them so that you can use them in future projects. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the simplest, which was the video in text title. Uh, to do that, get a piece of random footage, it doesn't matter what the footage is, it's just something for you to work on. And take that clip into Fusion. So what you've now got is your media in, which is your footage, and your media out, which is also your footage, because at the minute nothing's happening in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the title up. First we need to bring in a text node, and we're going to merge this text node onto our media in one. We're going to select the merge and we're going to come to operator and we're going to change it to in. So now we can't see anything because we've got no text but as you type your text in you see that we start to see something here. Now if we make this bigger we realize that I've got it wrong and what you need to do is select your merge node and press command and T. What that does is it swaps your inputs so that your video is going on top and your text is on the bottom or the background and that gives us the effect we want. With the merge operator set to in the footage only appears where the text is and on a very basic level that gives you your video in your text. Now if that's all you want you can make your macro from there. I added a couple of extra bits. So the first extra I did was to bring in a background node. Select your background node, change it to white. We're now going to bring in a merge node. We're now going to pipe our merge one into the foreground. And we're going to type our background into the background. And we are going to mask. So we're going to take a second output from our text and put it onto the mask of the background. So that all we're left with is our text. We're going to set our merge apply mode to multiply. Now, if we change the background color, we can tint our text and still keep the video underneath it. The final thing I added was an outline to this and to do that we're going to select our text node, we're going to press command or control C, click away and then shift command and V and this makes an instance. So this node here is an exact copy of this node. So any changes we make to this node will happen to this node like this. So if I select my original text node and change the text, we've got the original text node here, we've got our instance here. Both nodes change the same. Now we don't want this to be exactly the same, we want to be able to make some changes to this. So to do that, we're going to select our instance text node we're going to come to the inspector. Everything that's got a green box around it means that they're linked. So we're going to unlink or de-instance, as it's called, some of the parameters. And the ones we're interested in are in the shading tab. So select your shading tab. The first one we're interested in is appearance. So if you right click on the word appearance and select de-instance, we're now going to set the appearance to be an outline. Next, we want to de-instance where it says outside only. We want to de-instance thickness. And we want to de-instance the colors. So select the word red, right click and de-instance color group. What we can now do is change the properties of this outline 
we can make it disappear by making it black and dropping the alpha. We can change the colour of it to be whatever colour we want it to be. So we can have it on or off. What we're now going to do is take the output of our instance text and drop it onto the output of our last merge node. And if we now view that, our text has an outline which we can adjust. I found if you select your instance and go to thickness, drop it down to about 0.1. And then if you want it even thinner, you can just do it outside only. And it's just putting the order on the outside of the text. And that was basically the video in text that I set up. So on the edit page, if we now lift this up a track and bring in something else underneath it, you can get this effect where you've got your video playing underneath and your text with the second video on top. So now we've made it, how do we save it? Well, you go back into Fusion. You set this up how you want your default to appear. So let's bring in the line space in a bit. To save it so that you can use it and edit it, we're going to select all the nodes except media in and media out. What we want to do is select the nodes in the order that we want the controls available. So the first one is going to be a text. Now press and hold the command button and select instance text and background. And then the other three don't really matter. Once you've got all your nodes selected, right click and go to macro, create macro. And you're given this dialog box. This dialog box lets us decide which tools are available on the edit tab inspector. So the first thing you do is give it a name. Now we start working down our list. So what you've got is you've got your text plus node at the top. With all its controls, most of which you don't need to worry about. Then you've got your instance text in your background. So let's come up to the top again. We don't need to worry about anything in the image tab. For your text, you want your style text, which is the text itself, your font and the font style selected. We don't need to worry about the colour because there isn't any colour involved. We will have size, tracking and line spacing. Close down the text and under the layout, check centre. The next we would go on to the instance text and all the controls for this are way down, so we can close image, text, layout, transform. What we're interested in is shading. So we are looking for, you select your instance text. You can see what you're looking for in the inspector, in the shading tab. So we want thickness, outside only, and the color range. So we need to look for those. So if we scroll down, thickness is there, so we check that. Outside only is there, so we check that. And then we come down to we find these colours here. And you can change this to outline colour. Check it, that's your red value, green value, blue and alpha. And then you can close that up and then come to the background. We don't need anything in image in color. You want these, ignore the type you want color. You can double click on that again. 
and we'll call it tint because that's basically what we're going to use it for is to tint the colour of our text. So you want tint, which is this is your red value, top left green and top left blue. And that's it. So once you've done all that, you then come up to the top of the screen where it says file, select file and save as group. Now, from Fusion, by default, Resolve tries to save everything in your macros folder. That's not where you want to save it. So you need to go back a couple of layers in your folder structure. I'm on Mac, so this is going to be different for, for Windows. So if you come back to DaVinci Resolve, and then you scroll down, you've got Fusion, Templates, Inside templates, you've got edit, effects, generators, and transitions. And we want to go into the effects folder, not the titles folder. So you can just double click on the effects and hit save. I'm not going to do it because I've already got this saved and it'll just mess it up, but you can hit save. Now, if you're on 17.4, you can hit new folder, call it something like titles, and then save your macro into that. And I'll show you what that does in a second. So once you hit save, that goes away. You can close this down. And then if you come up to your effects library, if it's not open, just hit on the word effects, or it might say effects library, depending on what version you're on. Go to templates, go to edit, go to effects, and here you see the titles folder that I was talking about when you added a new folder. If you don't, if you're not on 17.4, you won't have that. What you'll have is your effects library or your effects, and then you'll have a whole list of effects. But with the new foldering system, it makes it so much easier because if you click on titles, you've got your new funky titles here. And obviously this is the video in text one. So with all that done, you can go back into the edit tab you can set up two new clips, so you can have your background clip and you can have your top clip. Drag that down, get rid of that because you don't need it. And then all you need to do is you go to your effects library, which again, look for effects at the top, make sure it's turned on. Go to effects and just open this little drop down arrow. You've got your titles, you've got your video in text, drag it on and away you go. You've got your text in, or your video in text ready to go. Select the clip, come to the inspector and click on the effects tab. And here's all the controls we set up. So you've got all your text that you can change you can change the size, tracking, etc. You can change the font. Our outline color, which is currently white. If you don't want an outline, make it black. And drop the alpha. And you've got no outline. If you want an outline, keep your alpha up. Pick whatever color you want for your outline. Now, this isn't a particularly good example for this, but you've got your tint controls, so you can drop your tint and it will tint your footage to whatever you want it to be. So your footage is still running, but it's now got a tint on it. And that pretty much wraps up the video in text effect. Um, I will do the other two effects, the box blur and the glass text, in two more separate videos. Otherwise, this video will just go on forever and you get bored. And I don't want that. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful and useful. Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I will catch you on the next one, probably with glass text. Cheers.